So let's have a look at the profitability ratios on Amazon. I hope you managed to do it on your own, but just in case, I also have attached to this lecture the solution, which is called financial ratio analysis, Amazon profitability. So in the sheet profitability, you'll find the results of the ratios we have calculated. So as you can see, it's going up from 33% in 2015 to almost 40% in 2018. This is actually quite big gross margin given the um, business. And if you go into this, you will discover that this is mainly due to the fact that they are doing a lot of additional things on top of the sales of their main products being the marketplace. So they offer something which is called Amazon Web Service, which is simply renting service. Now, when we look at the EBIT, it's much smaller. So it also shows you that uh, other operational costs apart from the cost of goods sold are huge. So we went down from 33% to 2 in 2015. And obviously, since we increased it in 2018, we are going down from 40 to 5%. But one way or the other, we managed to almost double the EBIT expressed as a percentage of sales. A similar effect we will see in the net income. This is obviously smaller. If we express it as a percentage of the sales, it is equal to 1%. And then in 2018, it's equal to 4%. In the case of EBITDA, percentage-wise, it's much bigger. It was 7% in 2015, and it grew up to 12% in 2018. Such a big difference between the percentage EBITDA and percentage EBIT suggests that there's actually huge depreciation of assets. And this is actually true when you look at the EBIT. It's roughly the same. In some cases, it's even smaller than the depreciation. So for example, in 2018, we've got 12 million of EBIT and then 15 million of depreciation and amortization. And therefore, the EBITDA is 28 billion. When it comes to the return on assets, it's small, but as you can see, it's growing, so it's good. So we managed to grow it from 1% to 6%, and also equity has drastically increased. So as you can see, it went up from 4% to 23%. So as you can see, the return on equity is quite decent, I would say. It's 23% is probably one of the highest you can have for such a business. So that's in short. You can go deeper into analysis of the profitability. We'll discuss one of the direction in the next lecture where we will try to decompose the return on equity and show what it depends on. You most likely managed to calculate the liquidity ratios but just in case I have attached to the lecture a file with the calculations which is called financial ratio analysis Amazon liquidity. And here in the sheet liquidity you will find the calculations. So let's look what we got for Amazon. So the current ratio is above one which is considered to be the threshold of uh, being liquid. So it means that uh, the Amazon is actually able to cover all its uh, current liabilities through assets. So if it had some problems, it could liquidate its assets and pay off still the all current liabilities. Bear in mind that in some cases, the current ratio is actually very low by design. So if you negotiate in such a manner that you don't have too much inventory and uh, that you have a long payment terms, then your current liabilities are high and your current assets are low. And this actually shows you that you've been very good in negotiating the deals and the opposition is strong. So whenever you analyze, rather look at uh, trend and take into account whether it was by design or it was something that was forced on you. When we move on to quick ratio, we can see that it doesn't actually differ that much. So the inventory didn't took that much of the current assets. And why it is so, we can actually discover in the third uh, cash ratio. So as you can see, they have a huge cash position. So around 50% of the liabilities can be paid off directly through the cash they've got. And this shows you how liquid those guys are. And again, we don't see many differences in the cash ratio. It's roughly on the same level. The same is obviously for the quick ratio. And finally, we've got the last ratio we talked about. So operating cash flow ratio. So here we relate the cash flow from operating activities to debt. And as you can see, Amazon is also very strong on that. So this he's able to pay the debts he owns almost within one or two years just using the cash flow from operating activities. So he's very liquid. What also matters is that uh, all the ratios we have mentioned so far, they're roughly on the same level over the course of years. Obviously here we see some one-off champs, uh, so there is a little bit too much in year 2016, and then this is actually reflected in 2017, the ratio is going drastically down. But as you can see, it's roughly on the level of 1.3 throughout the whole history of Amazon.
So let's move on to next group of ratios. Now we're going to be talking about efficiency ratios. And later on, we'll go back to this case study when we will try to calculate the ratios for Amazon. Now let's have a look how the efficiency ratios look for Amazon. So please open a file attached to the lecture financial ratio analysis Amazon efficiency or open the file you have worked on. And let's go through the results for Amazon. So first we look at the inventory expressed in the days. So as we can see, they have roughly one and a half, almost two months of inventory, obviously, which is not that much given that they do a lot of uh, same day deliveries and they've got the Amazon Prime service. When we look at the receivables, it's actually growing a little bit, but it's around 20 something days. The fact that it's growing, it most likely means that they are selling more at the credits or through credit cards, etc. And it also explains why they want to have their own payment system as well. The way we obviously interpret this, it means that uh, on average, we wait 20 something days to get our money back. So in this case, Amazon waits a little bit less than one month to get his money back from the customers for the products they bought. The, it is also maybe due to the fact that Amazon Web Service is B2B business and in B2B businesses, usually you pay a little bit later. What is actually very surprising is the payables conversion period. So how many days it takes us to pay our supplier. So on average, it's more than 100 days. And this is huge because it means that you actually work with the credit you get from suppliers. To understand it, have a look at the cash conversion cycle. And here it's actually negative. So it means that we actually work with the money from suppliers. And the fact that this is negative means that we get our money back from inventory and receivable before we have to pay our suppliers. So in a sense, all the risk on our activity is on the suppliers. So it's around minus 30 something days. Now, when we go to asset turnover, we see here decrease from 2016 to 2017. So from 1.6 billion, we go down to 1.4 billion. And it means that we are actually generating less sales from the same assets. So in other words, we need more assets to grow. The difference is not big, so it's not a big worry. But if the trend is significant, then it's uh, something to take into consideration. It would mean that either the assets gets more expensive or the company becomes less efficient. So that's in short uh, when it comes to efficiency ratios. And let's move to the last group of ratios, debt ratios. And as always, we'll go back later on to the Amazon case study and try to calculate those ratio for them as well. So we are at the last group of uh, ratios. So this time around, we're going to calculate the debt ratios for Amazon. So please open a file attached to the lecture, financial ratio analysis, Amazon solution, or use your file to compare it with my solutions here. And as you can see, we have started with a debt ratio. So it shows us what is the relation of the debt to assets. So as you can see, only 13 to 19% of the assets are covered by debt. So majority of the assets are covered either by other liabilities. So our suppliers are helping us to finance the assets or it's from our equity. Then the debt to equity ratio, it's 0 0.6 up to 0 0.9. So it means that we try to actually keep the debt below our equity. So to have equity as the dominating force in our balance sheet. And finally, one of the most important things, so net to debt ratio, and this is actually surprisingly low. As you can see, actually, in most cases, our net debt is uh, negative. And even in the worst case scenario, the EBITDA is so big that we are able to cover for majority of the net debt. And net debt is so low because of the fact that we have a debt, but we actually have even more cash and cash equivalent. This also suggests that debt is taken only in order to optimize taxes and cash is being preserved in order to either account for future investments they want to make, maybe some sort of acquisitions or buybacks of stocks. One way or the other, this shows you that actually Amazon future is not uh, threatened because they can still scale drastically their business as they don't have much debt on in their balance sheet. So that's in short when it comes to analysis of ratios. If you have any questions regarding that, please let me know by posting a question in the discussion field or email me directly in Udemy.